G'day guys, how are you going? Welcome back to the channel. So today we are doing a bit of a comparison between good old fashioned CAT6 Ethernet cable and the latest Wi-Fi standard Wi-Fi 6, also known as Wi-Fi AX. So today you're gonna to be, I guess, coming on a journey with me as I show you my network. We're gonna be doing a lot of different tests and I'm gonna be sharing with you the results on what it's been like basically going from cable to Wi-Fi and whether or not it is a suitable replacement so that you can use this as information really to know for yourself I guess going forward uh, without having to do a lot of the risk whether or not it is maybe the right decision for you so if you found the video helpful don't forget to chuck it a like get subscribed if you have any questions about anything I talked about let me know in the comment section and let's begin so guys, before I show you the results and everything else, I wanted to share with you the network equipment that I've got and also give you guys a bit of a tour and show you the configuration and the layout of our apartment. So really though, what inspired me to make this video was the fact that this network cable, which is about 10 meters long, I think, come out of that network jack, went along that skirting board there, along that skirting board down the back there, and then into my PC. And this was really my lifeline to the internet and to my NAS, which if you don't know, stands for Network Attached Storage. And that NAS, which contained all my footage, was basically going through that cable. And one annoying thing about long cables is when you've got these curtains here, which I was opening and closing all the time, um, it was getting tangled up and caught on that sometimes. And then the other thing was that I quite often will have a, another PC or a third PC that I'm doing Windows updates on or downloading games or running benchmarks. And so having a pretty, I guess, limited connection by just one cable and a weak Wi-Fi connection into this room wasn't ideal. So my old setup was I had this old modem from the service provider. Um, that was in my other bedroom, which is actually where our MBN comes in, which I'll show you guys. So that was our old modem with Wi-Fi AC. And then through a patch panel in the wall, we have another access point here just near the TV. So this is our old Apple time capsule from like 10 years ago. Um, and that basically fed that network jack. And then, you know, that's how we got internet in. And it was pretty old and outdated. Then what I wanted to do is start the migration towards Wi-Fi 6 and AX and all that good stuff. So this is a network adapter, a wireless network adapter from TP-Link. This is the TX50E. So that was gonna go inside my PC to replace that cable. It also had Bluetooth as well. Um, obviously not meant for a laptop and that served me for about a year and a half really, really well. Just giving me a link back to these Wi-Fi, I guess, routers and access points. Then I wanted to upgrade our modem in our house and our router to something a bit better. So this, is what we're using right now. So this is the Deco X55 from TP-Link. I paid for this. This is a mesh kit, so there's two of them. One acts as our main intake for our internet, and then the other acts as a access point for the lounge room to serve you know, all of our Wi-Fi devices out there and even in the room a little bit. Then I hit up TP-Link because I wanted to get one of their range extenders. Um, this is their RE700X to create a second network and set this up as an access point. So this will go into the wall and that will give us basically complete saturation um, in terms of Wi-Fi for this room. So if we have more than one PC, like a friend comes over or we have multiple computers we need to do updates on, we have two actual networks now. We have this Deco network and then we have this range extender network. So. Let me take you out into the apartment and show you guys how it's all set up. Obviously, this is a bedroom which we've now converted into an office, which um, you guys have seen a bunch. And then we've got our, our living room, dining. We've got our TV, soundbar, all that good stuff. Then kitchen, um, got a piano, got some plants, a bathroom, and that's the hallway when we enter through the house. So this is basically a two-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment with lots of glass, lots of mirrors, lots of walls and obstructions and nooks and crannies. It's actually a pretty difficult um, size apartment to properly service with good Wi-Fi. And then our bedroom where we sleep is actually where the internet comes in. So we have our NBN box, right? That then goes down into the first Deco X55. And we don't really need good coverage in the bedroom, which is why I don't care that it's here. But then from here, it goes into a network switch from Netgear that I've just added onto the wall. And then that, basically you can see there's four cables here going up into this patch panel. So basically in our apartment, in each 
corner of the apartment is another network jack um, for us to sort of piggyback onto. So we've got one in the living room, the master bedroom, a study, and then obviously where we are right now. So that's basically our network and that's how it's all configured. And the reason why we've got this switch and everything else is patched in is so we can get an actual ethernet cable to devices that don't have Wi-Fi. So the first device that doesn't have Wi-Fi is our network attached storage, my NAS, which has got about 16 terabytes of total storage for me to go ahead and access whenever I want, like my own personal cloud. I'll just move these shoes out of the way. The reason why it's here is obviously you can see down the back there, there is actually a network jack. And also because it's just this small little box, it doesn't make a lot of um, sense to have it taking up space on my desk and the noise that it creates, which is pretty limited actually, um, having it sort of tucked away out of sight, out of mind is the option that works for me. So that's where our NAS is. And that's, as you can see, cabled in going back to the modem. So then as you enter, obviously, yeah, you've seen that bedroom. That's where the internet comes in. The next access point or the next network jack is actually here where the TV antenna is. And you can see here, I've got some network cables and everything else for our second access point. So this is the other X55. This network basically services, you know, 99.99% of the living room and even the study outside. And even if you go downstairs, um, the coverage of that access point is really, really good. And then what we've done is we've added on, as I mentioned before, this extender to create a second wireless network. It would have been nice to get another deco, but one thing I do do like about this a lot is that it's basically an all integrated unit. It's got an ethernet port there. So basically we can turn this into an access point. So this will just go simply straight into our power bar. It will boot up and then with this ethernet cable going into that, we've now got a one gigabit link to this access point. Um, which goes into the wall there, which goes all the way out and back to the bedroom. So now we've got a dedicated Wi-Fi network with a one gigabit link here. And then we've got that second Deco network as well as servicing everything else. So I can basically have my own channel between this access point and my PC. And if that was to fail, I can then switch the PC over to the other Wi-Fi network, which is just there. So hopefully guys, that gives you a bit of understanding on how this is all put together, the reason why we did it. And now I can start talking about the results and what it's been like going from cable to Wi-Fi for the PC. Now, one other thing I'll mention as well is that this TP-Link Archer TX50E can do Wi-Fi 6, obviously, Wi-Fi 6 AX, um, but it also goes up to 160 megahertz in terms of the frequency band. The Wi-Fi that is actually also built into my PC, which I haven't talked to you guys about, the motherboard has its own Wi-Fi as well. So this is a motherboard from NZXT. This is the N7B650E on the AM5 platform with a, I think it's a 7800X 3D, 32 gigs of RAM, two terabyte SSD, 3080, all blinged out. But this Wi-Fi adapter only does 80 megahertz in terms of the frequency, essentially half of what that can do. So this is essentially capped at about 1.2 gigabits in terms of the link. And then this one here is 2.4, so double the theoretical maximum limit or bandwidth compared to the NZXT one. So 2.4 gigabits, 1.2 gigabits, and then the ethernet cable is a single gigabit. So just wanted to give you a bit of understanding on the PC side as well. Okay, so now time to talk results. So what you're seeing is the results we got on the Deco X55 network. That's the one that's in the bedroom extended into the living room. And we basically did three tests across all the different connection types. So we did a 25 gigabyte file transfer from the NAS that I've got, which is something that I do all the time. Uh, a web page latency test, basically measuring and seeing how long it would take for a page to load. And then gaming latency, so measuring the latency within Call of Duty Warzone. So do be mindful that the results with 
latency can be uh, something that depends on your distance to your service provider, what part of the country you're living in, what city you're living in, and what type of internet connection that you have. But what was consistent was the way that I tested everything on this network to basically find, I guess, the weakest link. So in white, we've got the one gigabit Ethernet cable, then in that blue gray color, we've got the 160 megahertz Wi Fi, which is that TP Link Archer add in card. And then in orange, we've got the 80 megahertz Wi Fi, which is on the actual motherboard. So the file transfer, the web page latency, and the gaming, as you can see here in white, the quickest was the cable every single time. It was the most stable, the most consistent, which is probably no surprise to anyone. But what I was really happy to find was that the 160 megahertz Wi Fi channel. The file transfer, it wasn't that much slower than the cable. Uh, web page latency, obviously double the latency, but in terms of web pages and loading times, I was okay with that. It didn't feel it, even though it was almost double. And then gaming latency was only one millisecond slower. What was actually interesting though, was that the 80 megahertz Wi-Fi band gave me better performance in terms of web page latency, but was way slower. Even though we were exceeding the one gigabit link speed, um, was way slower doing the file transfer and also you know, noticeably slower in gaming, although I didn't actually feel it when I was actually playing games and, you know, running around and it didn't really impact me in terms of like, was I losing fights between other team members because of the Wi-Fi? No, it was just me being a bad player. Um, and then moving on to the range extender network. So we put that range extender in the corner of the room and then we'd be basically did those same tests, obviously removing the cable though. We're just testing now the Wi-Fi connections from the PC to the access point. So the file transfer was pretty consistent. As you can see here on the deco, we did four minutes, 27 going to the X55, but then three minutes, 42 going to the range extender. So that's an improvement. Um, the file transfer, seven minutes, 41 on the deco, then down to six minutes, 45 on the extender. So even though the 80 megahertz band is one that I'm not going to be using, we still got an improvement by putting the Wi-Fi closer um, to the actual network adapter. And then with the web page latency, again, pretty consistent where the 160 megahertz band was slower in loading pages by, you know, one millisecond or so. And then gaming latency was actually consistent. Three, mil three millisecond uh, latency is what I measured on both of these. So hopefully these results help you out. Take your time with them. Press pause on the video if you want to go back and do your own comparisons. Um, but yeah, really happy to see that this one mega, sorry, 160 megahertz frequency and the adding card and the range extender is working really well and, you know, performing very similarly to the one gigabit Ethernet, especially when we look at the file transfer. Okay, so now conclusion time. I actually cut the cord about two weeks ago, being the ethernet cable to my PC to actually test out these networks properly and figure out which channel is best and which adapter is best. And as you saw in the graphs, the 160 megahertz uh, frequency band on that TP-Link add-in card going to the range extender gave me the best results. Second was connected to the Deco X55 outside. And, uh, you know, I've personally not noticed any dropouts. I haven't had any issues when I do my live streams. I don't even notice like at the busiest times when everyone is home and, you know, Netflix is streaming or KO streaming or we've got our phones hooked up and there's everything going at once. Um, I don't notice any difference being if it's just me by myself or me with everyone else here. So if you do have Wi-Fi 6 enabled devices and your router supports it as well, I would suggest maybe giving it a go. Ditch the cable if you're thinking about it and see for yourself what sort of results that you get because it is going to vary depending on your apartment size or your house size and what kind of walls you have. But for me, the distance between the desktop PC and the access point makes it a pretty viable option. And I would say that it should be an option for you as well if your device to the access point isn't too far away. So that's what I have to say. Um, I've had a pretty good time. I'm gonna be sticking on Wi-Fi for the future, for the foreseeable future. And I'll let you guys know maybe in a future video if there is anything else that I want to add. But other than that, guys, links to everything that I've talked about is down in the video description, as well as all my social medias. If you want to come and follow me and check me out on a live stream or whatever. Um, and maybe now that you're done watching this video, go back and check out my last one, which was on a wicked fast SSD, 12 gigabytes a second from Crucial, the T700. Um, go check it out because I thought it was a really good video. All right, guys, take it easy. Have a good one. See you next one. Bye-bye.